The year is 1969. Astronauts Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong just disconnected the Eagle from the Lunar Command module, and they were beginning their descent onto the moon. While this was happening, astronomers in Germany noticed a flare of lights in one of the craters. They managed to get a hold of Houston, and they asked Commander Michael Collins, who was flying the Lunar Command module above the moon, they asked him if he could see the phenomenon. Indeed, he did see a flare of lights in one of the craters of the moon. Here's the thing. This, there is a really good chance this is the first time you're hearing about this. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is not something from some random esoteric journal that was discovered decades later. And this is not a forged story for a BuzzFeed article. This is a real thing that you can read about on NASA's website. Were you told about this in school? Have you ever learned about this ever when talking about the moon? As far as the public's aware, the moon is a dead, lifeless rock with nothing that interesting going on on it. However, if you know anything about lunar transient phenomenon, you know this is the opposite of the case. So what is lunar transient phenomenon? Basically, it's what scientists describe anytime a light is seen emanating from the surface of the moon. NASA has a catalog of these that goes back about 1500 years. This is not a new thing but it is actually also very, very frequent and has been reported throughout human history and probably well before that 1500 years. The lights can range in color anywhere from green to red to even purple and blue. Here is a map of sightings of this phenomenon. Now the burning question is, why are there random, beautiful yet strange lights on the surface of the moon? Well, scientists have come up with a lot of theories, but they aren't even sure what exactly is going on. So just to be super clear, there is no scientific consensus on what causes transient lunar phenomenon, or as I'm just going to call from now on, moonlights. The first theory is that it's volcanic activity. The problem is, is that volcanic activity hasn't really been observed on the moon, and they don't think serious volcanic activities happen for at least 18 million years. So it's probably not that. Another theory is that it's gas being released from underneath the moon or in the surface of the moon. But this raises more questions and than solves answers. Like, okay, well, where's the gas coming from? And, and why is it such a beautiful color once it exits the surface of the moon? Is it igniting somehow? Like, what's happening there? That really doesn't answer that many questions. Of course, there's always the theory of, well, aliens are doing it, but... I don't even know. I don't even really like that theory. I think often whenever something strange happens, people use aliens as sort of a cop-out theory so they don't really have to take the question that seriously. So I don't really like that answer personally. The real answer is, is we simply don't know. There are two other explanations for why these lights might be happening though. One is asteroidal impacts, of course, minor ones, and another is static electricity. And although this can be some of the cause of some of the moonlights, it definitely can't be the cause of all of them, since many of these, including the Apollo 11 sighting, these lights can last for hours on end. In fact, there were British astronomers back early in, the, I believe, the medieval or Renaissance times who observed this lighting phenomenon on the moon. And they described the moon physically wheeling back like a snake when this occurred. Keep in mind, they documented this the same way they would document just about every other observation. What an incredibly weird thing to say. The answer is, we just simply don't know what these are. But next time you have a telescope and you're able to look at the moon, take a peek. Maybe you'll actually see one of these lights. Now, the anomalies definitely do not stop there. I don't know how many of you are familiar with hollow earth theory. Those of you that are familiar with this channel know I have a certain love for that theory. However, I'm sure some of you have heard of hollow moon theory. Now, this whole theory stems from one very specific experiment. Between 1969 and 1977, seismometers were installed on the moon by the astronauts of the Apollo missions. One of the rocket boosters that was used to get the astronauts to the moon was slammed into the moon. NASA actually does this all the time to test seismographs and test seismic readings of planetary bodies. I believe they've done this with Mars and even some of the moons of Jupiter. Don't quote me on that. Anyway, when the rocket booster hit the moon, they had an extremely disturbing response. The moon, quote, rang like a bell for about an hour. 
Now, when we say rang like a bell, it didn't make a sound, but the seismometer acted as if it was just ringing. I know that's kind of weird. Now, this has led to the conclusion that the moon might be completely hollow on the inside. Now, since then, they have said, well, there's no indication that the moon's hollow. Well, except for the fact that the seismometers say it's hollow. And they have since provided a map of what the inside of the moon looks like, even though this goes against a lot of the evidence we have about what the inside of the moon looks like. So it's incredibly weird. I don't know if this is just some kind of cope or, or what, but there is evidence that at least the moon is a lot less dense than we originally thought. And that opens the door to even more questions. If the moon is hollow, what is inside of it? How can a planetoid form and be hollow on the inside in the first place? This opens the door to a lot of questions. And when you hear people say, oh, the moon is an alien spaceship that has been placed here, well, their argument seems more convincing. I'm not saying I totally buy into it yet, but there's more and more reasons to believe that the more you look into the strangeness behind the moon. Here's a really weird anomaly for you. The moon is 400 times smaller than the sun in diameter. However, it's also 400 times closer. This is why they appear to be nearly perfectly the same size in the night sky. What are the odds of this happening by accident? This wonderful picture on the screen uses the International Space Station to illustrate this point perfectly. Look, they're basically the same size. What are the odds? Now, my cursory research online brought up no result because I literally wanted to know the mathematical odds. However, it's actually impossible to know the odds because we just don't have a big enough data set yet. However, everyone is saying, even scientists at NASA, that this looks extremely, extremely, extremely unlikely that this would happen in nature. Another strange thing about the moon is the moon's basically perfect orbit. There are a few theories about how this happened, but according to an astronomer I personally talked to at Clark Planetarium in Salt Lake City, he said there is no scientific consensus and that it is still a big mystery. I mean, compare it to the moons of Saturn. Just look at the difference between the two. Clearly the moon, I mean, I'm not going to say it looks intentional, but looks a little intentional. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very, very good. It's very perfect. And that leads into the final anomaly that I would like to talk with you about. Now, this has not been fully proven yet, but the age of the moon is constantly disputed. In fact, the current models that I can find online say that the Earth or that the moon is 4.425 billion years old and the Earth is only 4.5 billion years old. This means the this means the moon is basically the same age as the Earth. And as I dug around, a lot of people were saying that the only reason why they don't age the moon older than the Earth is because that would completely ruin our current models about how planets work and about how moons work and how these things form. Obviously, investigating this as a professional scientist would be extremely dangerous. You'd be called out as a loon. You would not be taken seriously. And it's that exact kind of behavior that causes science to stall. Because we should be able to ask difficult questions. We should be able to ask questions that might not make sense. This is how science progressed as far as it did in the last few hundred years. If the progression of understanding and knowledge is something that you believe is important and something that you believe is a very serious matter, then we should be allowed to ask weird questions that might not make sense. Could you imagine what would happen to our current models of the universe if we found out the moon was older than the Earth? That opens the door to all sorts of weird implications. How did it get here? How did it get into such a perfectly stable and beautiful orbit in the first place? Was it placed here? Who put it there? <laughs> These are all questions that would become a lot more serious if it got out that the moon is indeed older than the Earth. And I think we'll leave it there, guys. Guys, sound off in the comments. What do you think the moon is? How did it get here? What happened? I didn't even touch all the crazy legends from the ancients about how they thought the moon got there, how they thought the moon, <laughs> how they thought it functioned and all of that. So please sound off in the comments. Guys, leave a like and please subscribe if you enjoy the content. I love making this stuff and I really hope to talk to you guys again soon. So take it easy and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And next time you're out at night, look at the moon. Maybe you'll see something you didn't expect.
Have a good day.